In the last video, I showed you how to get Comfy UI running on an AMD GPU using Zeluda and the HIP SDK. Now, it's time to push it further. In this video, we'll explore several popular AI image generation models, from Flux Schnell to Stable Diffusion XL, and compare their performance, speed, and output quality running locally on the AMD 9070 XT. Let's dive in and see which one truly delivers the best results. For this benchmark, I'm running Windows 11 with a Ryzen 9 9900X CPU and 32GB of DDR5 RAM. Each model will generate a 1024x1024 image using the same prompt for fairness. Before jumping into the models, let's have a quick look on how text-to-image workflows generally work in Comfy UI. It's mainly three parts. You have the model, the diffusion model, and the VAE, and the clip encoder. Usually you will have a checkpoint node which loads all three together. However, for more flexibility, you can load the clip and VAE separately. So VAE stands for the Variational Autoencoder. Its job is to compress and then reconstruct the image. And it's useful because it works in a compressed space instead of the large space uh, which pixels occupy. The clip model, also known as the Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training, is a model trained to understand the connections between texts and images. These embeddings guide the diffusion model to generate the image that matches the text. And then we have the sampler node. This takes the diffusion model and the clip embeddings and gradually step by step denoises the latent image to make it closer to the desired text prompt. So most text to image workflows in ComfyUI follow this template so let's dive in into the first model so here we have flux dev and this workflow i got from going to this link which i will link down in the description and following this guide i just followed the first guide and i got the models from these links that you can find the first one gives you the clip models and the second gives you the vae model so going through it it looks a bit complicated but it has the basic concept that we talked about this loads the model this loads the clips and it uses two clips loaders. So uh, sometimes you can even have three. And this is the loading the VAE model. And over here, the decode is what transforms the latent image to an actual image that we can see. And this node over here is where you put your prompt. So I went ahead and put our benchmark prompt over here. And one thing to note is this model takes 20 steps. So I'm going to run it and show you the results uh, in a bit. Now this workflow is the Flux Schnell FP8 checkpoint model. So as you can see, it has the model, clip, and VAE all together. And I put the prompt over here. And one thing to note with this model is that it only takes four steps because it's a distilled model. So it can generate an image with only four steps. Next up, we have the Flux Schnell, but the quantized model. So the quantized model actually reduces the number of bits needed to store the weights. So it will use less memory. And we use the GGUF uh, model because the quantized models use a different file extension. And again, we're using the clip loaders and the VAE. And as well as that, we have the four steps, same as the FP8 checkpoint. And I put the prompt over here and we will see the results in the next part. And now for the stable diffusion models, this is STXL, the simple example I got from the workflow, browse templates, and I went to image and I went to the STXL simple. So it looks a bit complicated. This is because the STXL model has two different steps. So what we can see here is these two numbers, 20 and 25. This means the first step is the uh, base prompt, which runs for 20 steps. And then there we have the refiner model, which comes with the whole stable diffusion. And this refines the latent image to become more coherent and more uh, accurate to the text description. And now for the final model that I have tested, this is the SDXL Turbo and it's very fast as you'll see in a bit so this takes only one step and it's quite small the model so uh, we have the basic steps which is loading the checkpoint with the model clip and VAE and this has the sampler over here and this is the prompt that I put as well as the VAE decode 
I'm gonna go ahead and run all of them and show you all the results. And now the moment you've been waiting for, let's get right into the benchmarks of each model. So the first model we have is the flux dev model. So the total time it took is 235 seconds and the time per iteration is 9 seconds. And as you can see, it took 20 iterations. Now let's look into the image even clearer. So it looks very good, actually. And there's not much things that are incorrect or inconsistent. So I'd give this model a really good rating. However, the only downside is the time it takes. Up next is the Flux Schnell FPA checkpoint. So this model took, as you can see, 55 seconds and uh, the iterations were four iterations and seven seconds per iterations. So it's a, quite a, a bit faster than the previous one. And as for the quality, one thing I noticed is the proportions are a bit off, like the man is very, very large compared to the surroundings and the tree looks <laughs> uh, too small, but uh, it's not bad and the lanterns over here they look out of place a bit and this guy over here looks too big for the counter but that's a nimi nitpicking and it's not bad at all next up is the flux schnell q q6 and it took a bit less time so the quantization maybe saved a bit of performance however the time per iteration was eight seconds though it's not very accurate since it's just four out of four. Uh, usually in the beginning it would be lar a larger seconds per iteration and then it would reduce as you keep on generating. But as for the quality of the image, I like this one actually. See the lanterns, they don't look too out of place and the model looks, the character looks very realistic and the trees are not bad at all as well. So next up is the SDXL and this model took a bit more times as you can see it's 88 seconds and these are the two uh, iterations that it did so it's 20 for the base model and it's quite fast it took two seconds per iteration and then the five out of five is for the refiner model so that took around three and a half seconds per iteration. Now for the quality uh, I can't see much difference in the detail. Maybe the the blossoms here in the tree are a bit a bit wavy or a bit blurry, but it's not bad at all. There's a bit of a depth of field, and the these this lantern is over here looks a bit out of place and it's a bit chopped up. It's getting mixed up with the blossoms of the tree, and as well the character looks too large, but it's not bad for an AI image and yeah it's not bad as well overall the last model as we can see is <laughs> SDXL turbo and it's very fast it's 12 seconds to generate and it's just one step so the it took four seconds for the step but the remaining time was for the auto encoder to decode and as you can see the image is not the best <laughs> the character became two characters and it's like those uh, cartoons where they try to hide within the <laughs> the jacket or coat so and this guy only has one leg and you can see as well the cherry blossoms aren't as detailed as the previous models so uh, I wouldn't recommend using this model you might get better results by experimenting more and having simpler prompts but it's quite fast overall and now for the model and workflow that i recommend i'd go for the flux Schnell, uh, q6 because it's a bit faster than the uh, normal checkpoints flux Schnell, and in my opinion it gave the best quality in comparison to the time it takes to render keep in mind that this is the 9070 xt amd gpu using zluda and the hip sdk so it's not as optimized as it could be and there have been plans from AMD to release the 9700 AI Pro GPU with 32 gigabytes of VRAM in addition to more Rockham support such as Rockham 7 coming in the near future 
So it's an exciting time for AMD users to start generating images locally. If this video helped you figure out which model to try, please drop a like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments which one you'd use. Also feel free to join the Discord in the description down below to share your workflows and generated images. And if anyone has been able to generate a video using this uh, Comfy UI setup, please let me know in the comments as well and in the Discord. I'd like to try it out and make a video on that as well, because for me it kept crashing all the time. So thank you guys for watching and see you later.